Hi everyone, welcome to your August Alchemy Scopes. Um, it's been intense lately. We just uh, had the new moon and we also simultaneously are going through a Venus Saturn square and Mercury conjunct Mars opposed Pluto. So there could be quite a bit of, <laughs> hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Um, we could have quite a bit of anger coming up, quite a bit of irritability coming up, a lot of deep issues arising, causing responses and actions, thoughts of kind of aggression. So hang in there and really stand back when those come up and really look at the bigger picture because know that this is the cycle that we're in. And with the Venus-Saturn square, it's very intense because there's a necessity, there's such an obligation to mature our values, what we love and what we do, to put detail into that which we love and that which we do. It's quite intense. So you might be feeling some limits uh, imposing upon you recently. But it is a new moon, it's a new moon in Cancer it occurred at 23 degrees cancer and the sabian symbol the symbology that's imbued within this new moon that's um you know flavoring this entire next cycle is a woman and two men castaways on a small island in the south seas and it's an interesting symbol um Kaipacha was referring to Dane Rudyer and his assessment of the two men and the woman in this scenario. And it refers to kind of the three aspects of self, which is what Dane Rudyer um, referred to, which was, um, you know, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And so the mental was male, the, the emotional was female, and the spiritual was male. I can't say whether or not I agree with that assessment, but in this particular assessment, it's interesting because the symbol is on an island in the South Seas. And there's something about being on an island that's a bit of isolation, a feeling of isolation and limit. I'm going to move this. Again, my arm's getting tired here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So there's a sense of isolation of all those aspects of self, of the mental, of the emotional, of the spiritual, feeling isolated now. There could be that. And also it's the South Seas. And the South typically refers to below and underneath. It could refer to the underworld and going into the depths of self. So it could be thematically for you that this month, this cycle is just diving deeper, especially with these astrological aspects that are taking place. So let's dive into the scopes for the individual signs. A reminder that these are evolutionary scopes, the, meaning that these are about your soul's evolution. Since I began The Alchemist Awakens, this channel is devoted to your awakening and your soul's evolution, your maturity, your stepping into your power. It is about you diving deep into your essence self, your soul print, and fully expressing your infinite power and we have a long way to go i mean the majority of humanity has a very long way to go most of them aren't very awake yet so um anyway so when you look at these scopes know that the six points which is the sabian symbol which we just talked about so the symbology that's imbuing the story in this cycle and then when we look at the I Ching for the particular signs micro cycle, the micro theme, and then we look at the spread, which pulls up the, um, the particular story that's unfolding for your soul's growth. And then we look at the ascended master for guidance, the archetype, which are the qualities that are asking to be matured in you. And then of course the Dakini, which 
is evoking within you the embodiment. So what embodiment would optimally serve you to handle, to flow with this particular cycle for you. So this is a holistic uh, scope. I hope you enjoy it. So let's move on to those. Hello dear Leo and dear Virgo. I am recording this I Ching microcycle for both of you because you received the same one. And this is beautiful and fascinating because if you're aware, if you've watched previous scopes, you two have had a link going on over the course of previous months. It's wonderful. It's fascinating. You both received for this microcycle, for your particular signs theme for this month, you received number 37 community. And the two trigrams that make up this particular hexagram are wind above, fire below. And this is the meaning. A family that thrives is one where healthy interdependence is supported. Respect for different roles is essential. Strong and harmonious kinship is dependent upon every member of the clan. Trust, shared responsibilities, and good communication are essential, while each member must also be encouraged to find his or her position and appropriate contribution. The functional family is a team that symbolizes the ideal of human interdependence and has long provided a firm foundation for society. The healthy family is an embryo of society and the native soil in which ethical values take root and grow. The forces that bind a family are the feminine and masculine balanced. Relationships of all kinds are improved through cultivation of the receptive and the active, the yin and the yang. Learn to listen and receive advice and aid from others and be willing to assume an appropriate role in any group you are a part of or join. A good team player is supremely valuable to others. Hi Virgo, welcome to your spreads and cards. So let's dig in. I'm using again my Siri deck, my custom deck that I use for myself that I've made and used for myself and I'm using Dame Darcy's wonderful tarot deck and I've pulled four cards so we can look at the progression of the theme that's going to come up with the spread we'll look at the progression of energies throughout the month and yeah and then we'll shuffle our ascended master and we'll uh, shuffle our archetype qualities that are asking to be evolved through you this month now here with us today is our beautiful Cancer New Moon card. Again, this is the Lady Morgane Moon Oracle card deck. And she is with us for this spread. So she's witnessing the spread for us, yeah? So let me read a couple things too. Of course, this card imbues all the qualities of Cancer. And um, I'm just gonna remind us about these, you know, the energy set that's imbued with this next cycle of ours. Withdrawal into the self, growth and development, safety and security, protection and nurturing, healing, feelings and sensitivity, the need to let go of the past, move forward, flow, learning from and integrating the past, strength and virtue which I think is so gorgeous. So let's do it. So I've already pre-shuffled the deck and let's lay it out. Let's do it. Wow, Virgo. Gorgeous. Wow. It's a simple spread. Some of them are simple. Um, it, de it just depends on what wants to come, what spirit wants to bring. So this is, um, it looks, first of all, it looks gorgeous. You, this theme for you over the course of this next 30 day cycle, you're going to be in a space of imagination and optimism is what I would say here. 
you're going to be dreaming in regards to home. Now, this could easily be you imagining a new home for yourself. Or it could be you imagining, dreaming about, envisioning the home that you're in to be better, to be improved, to be more resonant. So it's one or the other, but you're going to be dreaming of an ideal home, a beautiful home and beauty, beauty is coming up very clearly. So you're going to be in a space Virgo this month of tuning in to beauty, the beauty of nature, perhaps the beauty of life itself, the beauty of yourself. So beauty and enjoyment of it, appreciation of it is really going to be thick in your psyche this month. And it's interesting. So here we have, you know, you're dreaming of your home and it could be a future home. And you do have, you know, your journey is here in the foundational sector of this synchronic spread. So your path is on your mind. You're, you're a path that imbues beauty. What path do you want to walk? So the theme will be your path and where you want to go. What's next? What's next? What wants to happen? You're going to feel protected this month. You're going to feel protected, safe, which is brilliant, isn't it? Because this new moon, the cycle of Cancer new moon is indeed about safety and security. You are going to have a sense, a default sense during the cycle of feeling protected, which is gorgeous. And mentally, I mean, this is beautiful, Virgo. Mentally, you're going to be in a space of connection. You're going to be connecting to perhaps your higher mind, your higher self, maybe to your guides. You're going to be connecting to deeper realms and you're going to be able to listen to it. Now, I will say that the cycles that come up are two edged. It's the theme that's active for you, but it's also the growth edge, meaning this is the thematic energies that are at play, but you have to act on it. So if the theme is you have tremendous potential to connect at deep levels to higher mind, you then need to meditate. Then you need to, you need to activate the connection. It's not like this is delivered to you. You have to meet it. It's like that with all the spreads for all the signs. It's always that way. So we have to actually meet it. This is the thematic energy set that's unfolding. It's rich with these potentials of being. So you do have great potential to tune into beauty and focus on that. You do have great potential to feel deep protection, to really connect with your path and imagine that beautiful home. Imagine what you want your home life to be like, what qualities, what circumstances would be your dream life. And this is really about manifesting that for yourself. So this is gorgeous. So let's take a look at the weeks. So I've already pulled the cards for the weeks. So Virgo, look at this. In week one, you get the world. This is Dame Darcy's deck, by the way, which is so great. So the world is success. In this first week after this Cancer New Moon, you're going to feel in such a deep place of satisfaction and success. There's something that has triggered within you a sense of real success, of real self-fulfillment. And what I would say, I mean, especially with this spread as a whole, this goes perfectly, but to really tap into that. So the, it does look like the cycle will be you being in that place of deep feeling deep success, which is gorgeous. So then in week two, we have the two of pentacles and the two of pentacles is about balancing material reality, essentially. So you are, you have a lot on your plate, perhaps, but you're able to balance it. You know, you're able to make it work. 
it might be that at some point you're going to have to let something go so that you, it doesn't become imbalanced. But for now, for the second week, you're able to balance your physical reality, balance your life, balance your money, you know, balance your material possessions. There's a sense of balance and ability, an ability to be grounded in it and deal with it, which is beautiful. So then in the third week, this is great. Now this is the five of pentacles reversed. So of course the five of pentacles upright is about not seeing the opportunity for material support that's near you, being in a state of sadness about loss, material loss, but reversed, it's talking about getting over that state, about feeling more optimistic, about getting over that space of sadness about loss. So you have looked at the church window, yeah? You have, you have stopped ignoring all the material support and beauty, you know, and protection that you have and you are looking at it, you are seeing it. You've turned around and you're able to see it, which is gorgeous. I love this for you, Virgo. So uh, two of swords, another two. So two of swords in the fourth week is the theme for you. And the two of swords is a uh, choice. There's a decision to make. And again, you know, it's interesting. It's hard to tell here what that decision will be because this is coming at the end of the cycle. So for the September cycle, we'll be able to tune into that. But there's a decision for you to make. And it could be, by the way, I mean, it could be about this, this, uh, this dream that you have with regard to a home, that there's some choice to make with regard to that with regard to making it a reality. But this is a good card. I mean, it can be opposition, but I don't get that that's the theme for you. I actually get that it's a choice that you need to make. So let's take a look at your Ascended Master that has special guidance for you this month. And that always also gives us an additional piece when we look at the master and what they're guiding us to do or to, you know, what to enact, it always gives us an extra piece to the puzzle as well. It's a full holistic story, which is so beautiful. So let's see, what do we have for Virgo? Right off the top here. You know, come out of the closet. Beautiful. Another sign got this as well, Virgo. Come, it's, um, Amaterasu, come out of the closet. And this is about speaking your truth. This is about being who you are fully. It's a beautiful card. Now it's interesting because I, I don't see that you speaking your truth has any specific implication to the theme. However, for us to dream something into reality, to be honest with ourselves and to speak truthfully about what we want, for example, is really important. It's key. So this could be that you really need to not only get honest with yourself internally, but that you need to speak it outwardly as well. So I find this kind of interesting. So let's see what archetype Virgo for you wants to come. And again, this is Carolyn Mrs. Deck. And the archetype cards are terrific because they connect with archetypes and symbols and stories, which is what I work with, along with holistic, the holistic nature of living systems. But um, these are great because it taps into the qualities that are asking to be evolved within us for this particular cycle. And I find them to be really very helpful, very enlightening. So Virgo, for you, you know, this is interesting. This card came up not for another sign, but for another reading. 
and it's a, it's a terrific card. So it's Beggar. Let me read it and I'll show it to you. The lower uh, frequency manifestation, so how we can hold Beggar, is dependence on others to the exclusion of effort. So it's not putting an effort to the work we need to do in order to receive the evolved manifestation, what wants to be evolved through you is confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival. Now again, protection is up here. So protection is a theme for you. But again, it looks like you're going to be feeling in a state of protection, but it might have been something in the past that is coming up. So confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival. So it's about you stepping up for your own survival awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. Now, the self-esteem component here ties directly into the come out of the closet, speak your voice, speak your truth. So there is a theme here for you, Virgo. So with regard to the theme here, and with regard to the energy sets going on every week, you have this other micro theme of self-esteem, self-love, self-care, and coming out of the closet and speaking your truth and um, speaking it outwardly to other. So it's quite, it's delicious. It's really good. So let's take a look and see what we have for your Dakini this month. Hello, dear Virgo and dear Scorpio. So I am recording your Dakini goddess that came forward for you this cycle together because you both received the same one. The embodiment, the goddess embodiment that's asking you to take on this month is the owl Dakini. And this is number 10, the owl Dakini number 10. Uh, again, a reminder, this is from Penny Slinger's 64 Dakini Oracle. And I'm going to read a little bit here. And it's extensive, so the continuation of it, if you would like to dive deeper, is uh, accessible via the link below this video to the online library. She is a winged, airborne being who abides in the dark places of the earth. Her wisdom is from the deep subconscious waters of the lunar landscape. She is nocturnal, a creature of the night. She guards the mysteries. She carries messages between the worlds. She is associated with wisdom, intuition, and secret ways of knowing. In some cultures, she is seen as the harbinger of death, but really it is just that she has the ability to move between worlds between the living and the dead. She is guardian of the afterlife, keeper of spirits and seer of souls. And I'm going to read a little bit below here too. A gift of wisdom from Owl Dakini. Something you have been nurturing in secret, in darkness, for a long time perhaps. It might be time to hatch it. Perhaps it is time to begin the period of incubation. Incubation. Self-cultivation can be likened to the incubation of an egg. It can be a long time before an egg is ready to hatch. This is a special time for you. You should be, excuse me, you should not be hurried or distracted from your inner quest and the time of incubation. Others may think you are hibernating, vegetating, but this is far from the truth. Do not be concerned with their views. This is your own private work. Owl Dakini is here to guard and stand by you at this special time. She is your secret ally in the moonlight and in the darkness of the woods, which you can't see because of the trees. Let the owl in you fly over and get the lay of the land, the overview. Let your night vision and your sixth sense guide you. Move silently as the owl. She has acute sense perception of sight and sound. Occult vision, gift of prophecy, visitation, 
concentration, being vigilant, deep wisdom, and silent reflection. So there's more here. Again, if you'd like to dive, you can access the information in the online library. The link is below this video.